If you need to split and rejoin a large file, but you don't trust all those utilities out there, you've come to the right place. In this bite-sized tutorial, we are going to code a Python script that can split a large file into chunks and then rejoin those chunks together when the whole file is needed. This script can save your tailbone if you need to store a large file on a FAT file system where you are capped at 4 GB, or if your limit, if your constraint, is the physical medium where you are going to store the files. Let's say a DVD, a CD, floppy disks. Before we move on, I'm Rafael and this is Coder Cave. If you are interested in software development, you should subscribe to this channel. Let's code! In this first iteration, we are going to code the minimum viable product. The first step is to code the split method. This is what's going to read the file and uh, chunk it. And the second step is to code the join method. That is the code that reads the chunks and recomposes the original file. We are going to test that using an MPEG-4 file and see how things are working. Future iterations of this script will include a command line interface using click and uh, possibly an interactivity using uh, questionary. But that's stuff for a different video. If you want to check my tutorial on Python click, here's the video. And for interactive command line interfaces, there is a questionary and I have a tutorial also for that. Uh, this is what you need to look for. Let's move on. As usually, we start by creating a virtual environment. And once it's created, we activate it. All right. Now we can move on to the coding and uh, we can start adding some boilerplate code. So the first thing I will add our uh, main method that's going to be our entry point as defined by this uh, uh, snippet down here. And uh, yeah, our code is expecting two methods. One method is called uh, split. So underscore split. And uh, the other one, it's called uh, join. As the name implies, uh, split will be the method that splits the file and join obviously will take all the chunks and rejoin them. Uh, you can see that the method, the main method expects a command line argument. So for this to work, we'll need to import uh, argv from uh, sys. So this is the array of uh, command line arguments. This is really rough and we will improve on that in the second part. Now we can start working on our split method. So the first step is to find the file that we need to split. Our assumption is that the folder in which we are working only contains the file that we want to split. So first thing, we need to find the reference to the current uh, working directory. So we are going to use uh, pathlib to help us with the coding. So path has uh, quite a few interesting uh, useful methods. So here we are going to find the path is going to be the co uh, current working directory. So path.cwd. So here we have a reference to the current uh, directory. And, th and then we need to find the file to split. So let's code the reference. And then we use the iter there um, method of path. If uh, f is a file, then we need to check uh, that it does not the name does not start with a dot uh, because that would signal a hidden file. So for some reason on my system, I find that uh, the first available file is a hidden file. So with this condition here, I'm filtering out. Uh, hidden files. All right, so now we have a reference to the file that we want to split. Actually, we need to make sure that we have a file to split. So, so if we do have a file to split, I want to uh, open that file. And we need to open it uh, for reading. So I'm going to read this file and um, I'm going to write chunks. So I need to read it in binary mode. And then I'm going to create a method called chunk file. And this is going to get the file. File is going is a handle to the stream. And then um, 
and then I want to pass the file extension. And in Patlib, the reference to the extension is uh, suffix. This is going to be useful because I want to uh, name the chunks so that they include the suffix of the original file. This way I can reconstruct the original file and give it the correct extension. All right, so let's create the chunk file method. Okay, so what this method is going to do, this is going to uh, actually chunk the file. So there are a couple things that I want to uh, code uh, over here. Uh, I need to define my uh, read buffer and how big the chunks will be. So I'm going to read the original file 100, uh, one kilobyte at a time and I want those chunks to be uh, 100 megabytes big. With that, I'm going to paste the code for chunk file over here and comment it. So the first, uh, first thing uh, here, uh, I'm going to keep a reference to uh, the current uh, size of the chunk that I'm writing. Because when I reach this, the size, the chunk size, I want to stop writing that specific chunk. Uh, I need a, a reference or a, a counter for the current chunk to cost construct the name of the chunk. And then I need to know when I'm done reading the original file. And the original file is referenced by this file that is passed to the chunk file method. H here the splitting is uh, really based by uh, on conventions. So the name of the file is going to be uh, the, the ordinal of the chunk, then the extension of the original file, and then dot chk, which is a short for a chunk. I need to open each chunk in append binary. Again, I need to work on the file uh, with a binary, uh, in a binary fashion, and with append, every write operation is going to add bytes to the existing file and if it if the file does not exist it's going to create one so chunk is going to be the reference to the stream of the chunk that i'm working on then i will start iterating on the original file so i'm going to read from the original file an amount of bytes that is defined by the read buffer size in this case it's going to be uh, one kilobyte and i'm storing this into a, a buffer so if the buffer um, is uh, null or uh, does not contain any bytes, I know that I'm done reading, so I will break out of the loop. Otherwise, I will write those bytes into the chunk. Chunk is a, is a reference to the current chunk that I'm writing. And then I need to update my counters so that I know when I'm done writing a chunk or uh, and uh, should start writing the next chunk and how to name it. So I, I update the current chunk size the next step here is to figure out if I need to stop writing to the chunk now or I can keep going. So I will check that the current size plus the read buffer size exceeds the chunk size that I set as a limit for those chunks. If this test uh, passes, I will increase the chunk ordinal and um, I will reset the chunk size to zero. And with this, I will break from this uh, uh, this loop over here, which will create a new chunk. And uh, the second chunk will be two dot whatever the file was dot uh, chk. Let's test the splitting. In this folder, I have a subfolder called big file that contains um, an MPEG-4 file of 330 megabytes, uh, more or less. In our script, we set the chunk size, maximum chunk size to 100 megabytes. So I'm expecting four chunks for this file. So let's call the script. And let's pass the argument split. All right, splitting is done. And now we can see that we have four chunks. So the chunks are named uh, one, two, three, four. The extension is part of the name, so that's an MPEG-4, and then CHK, which is um, our uh, naming convention. We can see that chunks 1, 2, and 3 are of about 100 megabytes, while the fourth one has the remaining bytes in it. Now that our splitting code works, 
we need to code the joining code. And of course, I have a snippet for that. Um, yeah, we, I can drop this printing. So again, as before, we need a reference to the current working directory. And then I need to uh, find a list of all the chunks. So I'm going to use the rglob uh, method filtering by uh, chk extension. So this is going to give me a list of the chk files. Then I want to sort them by name. So I, by convention, I call those chunks like one, two, three, four, and so on. So I know that sorting them will give the, the chunks in the correct order. Then I need the extension of the file. Now, because our files are called one.mpeg4.chk, um, we will have uh, two suffixes. And I, I need the first one. So I take the first chunk, reference to the suffixes, and I just take the first one. And this is going to be, in our example, mpeg4. Then I need to create the one file that rejoins all the chunks. So I'm going to, again, open a file in append binary mode. And for each chunk in my list, I'm going to uh, open these chunks in read binary. That's very important. It has to be binary. Uh, and uh, iterate through them. So I will read uh, a buffer size, uh, again, uh, 124, uh, 1024 bytes. And uh, if I have data, I will write that to, um, to the file. So this is the rejoined file. Okay, so now it's time to test the join script. So here we have the folder with our uh, original file. You can see the preview shows that uh, there is something and the four chunks. So now I will uh, call again the Python script. And this time with uh, join as, a, as an argument. And then moving back to the screen capture, we see that uh, we have a file called join mpeg4 and the preview uh, is there and uh, we can see that it's uh, it's playing so the file is uh, valid there you have it this code works it makes a lot of assumptions but it's going to split a big file and allow you to store it on some uh, legacy medium let's say if you found this tutorial helpful give me a thumb up and if you haven't done it yet hit subscribe this will keep me motivated in producing more tutorials in a future iteration of this script i want to add some command line arguments and some level of interactivity to make it more user friendly